Hello. Here's the news of this R from T Solid TV. I'm Kende Durusilu. Here are some major headlines. Oya approved 75.88 million naira for reaccreditation of Adioyo Maternity as Tishin Hospital. Al Qaeda penetrating Northwest US alerts Nigeria. US offer $10 million for information on election intruders. And in sports, Arsenal to cut jobs as coronavirus bites. The news and details. Oyo State Executive Council has approved funds for reaccreditation of Adelio Maternity and Yemetu in Bado as a full-fledged teaching hospital. The government said the accreditation initially gotten was withdrawn for failure to have necessary equipment in place, saying it was in conformity with the President's administration's passion to revitalize the health sector in the state. This was disclosed by the Commissioner for Information, Culture and Tourism, Honorable Wasiu Latumosu in Bado, on Wednesday after the state's 19th virtual Executive Council meeting. He said in a statement that the hospital would henceforth serve as residence training and gynecology center to add value to the iconic health institution and improve the image of the state, adding that the move would lead to procurement of medical equipment for the teaching hospital at the cost of 75 million eight hundred and seventy seven thousand six hundred naira. The commissioner added that the equipment to be procured includes six hydraulic delivery beds, two theater tables in electronic and automatic, and one aparoscope plus one hysteroscope, one Hoposcope, two CTG, two ultrasound, four angle poise lamps, and one bowl anesthetic machine, noting that the facility is expected to be ready for reaccreditation before the end of the year 2020. The Oyo State Wing Executive Council, SWEC, of the Nigeria Union of Teachers, NUT, at a meeting in Igora, Ibarapa, on Wednesday, have uh, praised the partial reopening of schools in the state by the state governor, Engineer Shane Makinde. The SWEC at the end of their meeting commended the proactive and laudable decisions taken on reopening of schools to Basic 6, Junior Secondary 3, as well as Senior Secondary School 3 to write their statutory final examinations. The NUT applauded Governor Makinde's giant and uncommon strides of prompt payment of the teachers' salaries, allowances and other fringe benefits accrued to them as and when due, particularly during the current economic crunch occasioned by the global COVID-19 pandemic. The union, however, appealed to the governor to graciously grant an approval to the payment of the backlog of 2018, 2019 and 2020 leave grants to the primary school teachers in addition to the prompt and full payment of the second term school running grants to the primary school subsector. The United States has alerted the federal government of Nigeria of the penetration into the country of the Al Qaeda insurgent group through the northwestern part of Nigeria. Commander of the US Special Operations Command Africa, Dagvin Anderson, who disclosed this during a briefing, said the group was also expanding to other states of West Africa. In his remarks obtained from the U.S. Department of State, Anderson said the U.S. would continue to partner with Nigerian sharing intelligence as regards various violent extremists. Anderson said in his statement that for international efforts to yield desired results in the fight against terrorism in Nigeria, the government must take the lead, saying the United States as well as the United Kingdom and other countries can come in and assist with that partnership. Middle Young Senior Staff Association of Statutory Corporations and Government-Owned Companies, SSASCGOC, has pleaded with the federal government to urgently convene a stakeholders meeting to discuss the issue of stamp duties and its production that has become a source of rift between the Federal Inland Revenue Service and the Nigeria Postal Service, NIGOST. The association contended that such meeting should include the FRS, 
NIPOS, S-S-A-S-C-G-O-C, the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy. The union made the call in a statement by its General Secretary, Ayo Olonfemi, even as it declared that it had the responsibility to protect the interest of all senior staff in statutory corporations in Nigeria, including the FIRS. Recall that SSASCGOC had last month issued a 21-day ultimatum to the federal government on the issue, insisting that failure to call the stakeholders' meeting would leave it with no option than to declare full industrial action. However, the union has called on President Mohamed Buhari to intervene in the spirit of social dialogue and to convene a stakeholders' meeting to discuss the issue of stamp as it relates to stamp duties. On the foreign scene, the United States Secretary of State Michael Pompeo yesterday announced a $10 million reward for information on foreign interference in its elections. The move is reported to target foreign government agents seeking to compromise the country's federal, state or local elections through cyber attacks. It was also reported that in 2019, the special counsel, Mr. Robert Mueller, launched a lengthy investigation into less Russian meddling in the elections in favor of President Donald Trump, establishing that the Trump campaign criminally conspired with Russia to influence the election. Trump has strongly denied colluding with the Russians and dismissed the Mueller probe as the product of a fake dossier paid for by the Democratic Party. Meanwhile, in July, the Democratic Party's candidate for the November free election, Mr. Joe Biden, said he received a security briefing on plans by the Russians to interfere again. Biden vowed a swift retaliation against any nation that attempts to meddle in the American democratic process. Iran's president Hassan Rouhani has offered condolences and medical support to Lebanon after a huge blast at Beirut port devastated entire neighborhoods of the city. According to Rouhani in a message to his Lebanese counterpart, he said Tehran is ready to offer medical and medicinal aid, help treat the injured and other assistance needed expressing hope that the cause of the deadly blast would be uncovered and calm restored to Beirut as soon as possible. The Lebanese Red Cross has however said on Wednesday that the explosion appeared to have been sparked by fire igniting 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate left on secured in a warehouse. The head of Iran's Red Crescent Society however noted that it would send nine tons of food aid as well as medical supplies to Lebanon, adding that Iran would also provide Lebanon with a field hospital as well as specialized medical teams and equipment. To some sports news, FA Cup winners Arsenal have announced on Wednesday plans to cut 55 jobs due to the damaging effect of the coronavirus pandemic on the club's finances. The Premier League outfit said that their main sources of income had all been hit, including broadcast revenue, match day takings, and commercial activity. Players and management have taken pay cuts during the COVID-19 lockdown, while the club said further savings were needed to weather the storm. In a statement signed by both the head of football, Raul Salmheli, and managing director, Nai Veng Katishem, says our aim has been to protect the jobs and base salaries of our people for as long as we possibly can. But unfortunately, we have now come to the point where we're proposing 55 redundancies due to the global economic projections that are also very negative. Inter Milan Chief Executive Giuseppe Marota has said that Alexis Sanchez will officially become an Inter player on a permanent basis today. Sanchez, who has spent 2019 to 2020 alone at Inter from Manchester United, scoring four goals and providing eight assists across 22 Serie A appearances, as Antonio Conte's side finished second behind Juventus. Reports emerged this week suggesting United would terminate the Chilean's contract at Old Trafford, which is believed to be worth £500,000 per week. These claims were, however, confirmed on Wednesday with Morota 
revealing the 31-year-old had agreed to a three-year deal with Inter. News of Sanchez's signing comes after head coach Conte hit out at Inter's hierarchy for not protecting his squad enough this season. However, Maruta revealed Inter's chiefs have held discussions with Conte amid doubts over his future. With that, we've come to the end of the news, a recap of the headlines. Oyo approves 75.88 million Naira for reaccreditation of Adioyo maternity as teaching hospital. Al-Qaeda penetrating Northwest, U.S. alerts Nigeria. U.S. offer $10 million for information on election intruders. And in sports, Arsenal to court jobs as coronavirus bites. Please do not forget to always adhere to COVID-19 safety measures. The news was compiled by Mubola Madikale. I am Kendi Jurusilu. Good day and thanks for watching. Thank you.